I can forgive the pilot. I can forgive the children because they were innocent. This man was 39 years old. And for those 39 years, he had an exemplary flying career. Yeah. Children shouldn't have been allowed in the cockpit, I don't believe, but be saying that now would be well On the 23rd of March, 1994, Yaroslav Vladimirovich Kudrinsky, a Russian pilot, was accompanied by his family aboard a commercial flight. Aerofloat Flight 593, leaving Sheremetyevo International Airport in Moscow, Russia, and expected to arrive in Kai Tak Airport in Hong Kong, China. Kudrinsky, being the relief captain on this flight, was taking his 13-year-old daughter and 15-year-old son for their first international holiday in Hong Kong and would invite them to the flight deck in a bid to show his proud children the complex controls their dad had to work with every time he flew a plane. This not-so-legal bring-your-children-to-work moment would lead to the tragic death of 75 people aboard Aerofloat Flight 593, including 63 passengers and 12 crew members. Stay tuned as we recount the minutes before one of the saddest plane crashes in the history of air travel. What I objected to was the way we was treated by Aeroflot. After the accident, they wouldn't tell us anything what was going on. They denied everything. I wanted to know why my son died. I wanted to know why these men had been allowed to do something. In the cockpit, Captain Andrei Viktorovich, First Officer Igor Vasilyevich and Vladimirovich Kudrinsky, who was there as a relief captain, had all ascertained the flight had taken off smoothly and was within cruise altitude before engaging its autopilot function. Having little to do in the flight deck, the pilots would against their better judgment extend an invitation to Kudrinsky's kids, allowing the teenagers access into the cockpit for a first-hand experience of flying a commercial aircraft. Yana, Kudrinsky's 13-year-old daughter, was allowed to sit in the captain's seat and steer the control wheel, while Kudrinsky slightly adjusted the autopilot to give her the impression that she was indeed in control of the plane. This exercise was considered to be completely harmless by the three pilots as the plane had been in autopilot and the kids playing with the steering wheel should have no effect on it. However, they would soon find out too late that a system design on the sophisticated Airbus A310 made this activity a quick step to their tragic death. Yana would exit the captain's seat safely for Eldar, Kudrinsky's 15-year-old son, to have a feel of the airplane as she did. This was when everything went sideways. The teenage boy settled into the captain's seat and grabbed the yoke like his junior sister had done, moving the control steering of the plane to the side as his dad, sister, and other pilots watched on. Several minutes after Eldar had taken the wheel, the plane suddenly began to bank steeply to the left, bending more slightly every second. Eldar noticed this unusual happening and called out to his father, worried. Why is it turning? This threw the pilots into confusion as they tried to figure out what was causing the plane to bank while on autopilot, a confusion that would waste too many precious seconds. On the primary flight display, a screen that lets pilots visualize the plane's course, the aircraft seemed to be taking a curved path, like it would when close to an airport and about to land. This led to further confusion among the pilots as they took more time studying the screen to find out why the plane was taking this arced path. Aerofloat Flight 593 continued to bank sharply, getting steeper until it exceeded the 45 degree limit it was built to handle. The primary flight display suddenly went blank, leaving the pilots with no information of path or altitude while the plane continued tilting hard to the side, flying at 600 miles per hour. Panic filled the flight deck. The plane was out of control, but in the captain's seat was a 15-year-old boy with no experience flying an aircraft, glued to the seat by the G-forces now acting on the plane due to it making a sharp turn at such a high speed. 
These same G-forces would hinder the other pilot from taking charge of the plane as it went out of control, making Eldar the only one with both hands on the control wheel. The pilots, all terrified, tried to give Eldar basic instructions to help him steer the plane to safety, but this would not suffice as he had no idea of what he was doing and could only watch as the plane was now almost banked at a 90 degree angle and was losing altitude. It had been about four minutes since Eldar took the captain's seat, and the passengers and crew members aboard Aerofloat Flight 593 to Hong Kong could all feel the commotion as the plane struggled to stay in the sky. Unknown to them, their fate was hanging loosely in the hands of an underaged boy. In the tumult, an alarm goes off in the cockpit, indicating the plane's autopilot has been fully disengaged and all its controls were now placed in the hands of Eldar. The pilots know this is no good news, but worse is about to happen. Another alarm goes off in the cockpit, indicating that the plane is about to stall. This activates the plane's automatic safety system and sends the aircraft into a nosedive to regain its speed. The plane is now falling out of the sky, nose first, at a terrifying speed of 40,000 miles per minute. The freefall has replaced the G-forces from the Sharp with weightlessness, and passengers who were not buckled into their seats are thrown dangerously to the roof of the aisle. In the cockpit, first Captain Igor Vasilyevich pulled back the control wheel as hard as he could to save the plane from crashing into the earth in just minutes. The nose finally began to lift up, but unfortunately, he realized in horror that he had overcompensated the pull, and the plane was now tilted up at yet another dangerous angle. Passengers who had flown out of their seats previously now came falling to the floor of the aisle as this new position made everyone on the plane four times heavier than their weight. Kudrinsky rushed into the captain's seat, but the plane was now climbing faster than its engines could handle and stalled again, beginning another frightening nosedive toward the earth. With two pilots on the control wheel for the first time since Aerofloat Flight 593 went out of control, Hope returned to the flight deck for a second as they seemed to regain command of the plane, using its rudder to stabilize it into a normal position. However, the plane had fallen too far out of the sky and too fast. They, unfortunately, hadn't noticed how close it was to the ground when they stabilized it, leading to a fatal crash into the kuznetsk Alatau mountain range in Kamerovo Oblast. This ghastly collision with the Earth claimed the lives of all 63 passengers and 12 crew members on board. When after two hours the control tower in Siberia had not gotten a response from Aeroflot Flight 593, they sent out a search team. The team would find the remains of the plane scattered in the snowy Siberia mountains with no survivors. Investigators would immediately dive into action, trying to unravel the mystery behind a new Airbus A310 falling out of the sky with no registered malfunction or even a distress signal from the cockpit. It would later be revealed that the captain's decision to bring his children into the cockpit during the flight was a mistake far too costly. While Eldar played with the wheel, he unknowingly applied enough force to the control column to inadvertently disengage the plane from autopilot, switching it to manual controls of the ailerons, a design Airbus had put in their newer planes at the time to enhance safety, but this was the opposite. While he now controlled the banking of the plane, the autopilot was still in charge of the other systems and the spinning chaos. His dad and other pilots could not figure this out before it was too late. In some other plane designs, a partial switch from autopilot to manual would set off an alarm in the cockpit, but the Airbus A310 had no such feature, leaving the three well-experienced pilots aboard with no awareness of the situation till they crashed fatally into the mountains. 
The tragedy of Airbus A310-304, flown by Aeroflot, prompted a global revaluation of cockpit procedures. Many airlines put stricter cockpit access policies in place, ensuring what happened in March of 1994 never happens again. Airbus Industry, the world's largest maker of aircraft, has since updated its designs to give clearer warnings when important switches take place. Of the passengers that lost their lives in this tragic accident, 40 were Russian nationals and 23 were foreigners who had mostly come to seek business opportunities in Russia. Their bereaved families dropped flowers at the crash site for weeks as sadness covered the country of Russia for an extended period. I can imagine the horror they experienced in their last moments. He knew there were not only all those people depending on him, but also his own kids. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, leave a comment, and share. Also, subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos like this. See you in our next video.